Uh huh. What you're looking at is actually a cell phone tower. Many communities have decided that this is easier on the eyes than one of these. Yeah. President of Larson Camouflage, a company that builds cell phone towers in a wide variety of disguises, from palm trees to water towers to flagpoles. Cell antennas are also being hidden inside all kinds of architecture, like clock towers and fake chimneys. And every antenna comes with electrical equipment, which also must be hidden. In this Colorado site, it's encased in a man-made boulder. And in Arlington, Virginia, this house has the neighborhood fooled. Door-to-door -door salesmen visit this house. Free newspapers are dropped off at this house. John Johnson works for Verizon Wireless, which built a house where no one is ever home. The inside is filled with the equipment needed to operate a traditional tower that sits in the backyard. Why do you have, really, a very nice-looking house as a housing for electronics? Well, if you look around, this is a very nice neighborhood. We wanted to be able to blend into the neighborhood. But disguises are expensive. A tree like this can cost as much as $120,000, four times the price of a metal tower. It is a source of revenue that can be extremely beneficial. The church makes $72,000 a year by leasing its steeple to Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile. The money used in church ministries. Christ taught us to be wise about the, the talents that we have and to use them for the benefit of the kingdom. And it's happening at churches both across New England and nationwide. There's so much demand for steeple space, it's even spawned a new company that markets church steeples and negotiates contracts with carriers. People ask me what I do for a living, I say, I spend my day just funneling millions of dollars into the kingdom of God. And everybody chuckles, but I say, no. That's what we do. Churches profiting not by spreading the word, but by transmitting. It was a vicious assault on one girl. Three separate assaults by two teenage girls with a store manager yelling to stop, but no one stepping in. To stop it. I went to go use the bathroom, I come back out, and I had two girls spit in my face. One of them pulled my hair, one of them tried to pull my shirt off and my bra. They were kicking me in my face, kicking me in my back. 22-year-old Chrissy Polis was born a man, lives as a woman, a potential reason for the attack. This is a against violence. Members of the transgender community rallied in the McDonald's parking lot Monday evening in support of Paulus. We are a community of human beings. Yes. Okay? We are your mothers, your fathers, your sisters, your brothers, your aunts, your uncles, your neighbors. They paid special attention to Vicki Toms. See her in white. She's the woman who stepped in when no one else did to help Paulus and paid for it. All I did was ask them to get off of her, get off of her, and they wouldn't get off of her. And I sort of body held her away, and then she screamed at me, it's not a URF in business, and punched me in the face. Polis ended up on the floor having a seizure. Vicki Toms, who stepped in, is angry that employees and customers didn't help. What will my mother say about this? She just said, you're crazy. <laughs> she would have said, you're crazy for doing it, but she would have done the same thing. And she would have been proud of it. Yeah. One of the teenagers, 18, is in jail facing two counts of assault. The other, 14, is being treated as a juvenile. Authorities are investigating whether to add hate crimes to the charges. Was she attacked by a young man after she filed a police complaint against him for stalking her? That is what a young resident of Motibag is complaining of. 24-year-old Neha Gupta claims she was home alone when the man who has been stalking her for two years burst in through the unlocked back door. This is her family's version of what happened next. उसके ऊपर केरोसिन डाला हुआ था काफी ज़्यादा करीब एक लीटर ही करीब और उसको दीवार पे सर वारा मारा काफी उसका और उसके पेट में भी लात वारा मारी है काफी हर्ट हुई है वो इंटरनली ब्लीडिंग है मेरे ख्याल से उनकी Neha does not deny that she was friends with the man who allegedly attacked her. His sister was Neha's classmate, but she says that when she rejected his marriage proposal, he started threatening her, and so two months ago she filed a police complaint against him. Her lawyers say that the man she is up against, Deepak Sharma, is the son of a powerful industrialist in Ghaziabad, and was able to persuade the police there to ignore the case.
लेकिन अभी तक किसी ने कोई कार्रवाई नहीं की उल्टे जब हम उससे एसएसपी से मिलने गाजियाबाद गए थे और नेहा का बयान भी उन्होंने लिया पहले तो उसे हमें सारे दिन बैठाए रखा और शाम को उसे हमें बताया कि ये आदमी बड़े ताकतवर हैं और अगर मैं कोई एक्शन लूंगा तो मायावती मुझे तुरंत हटा देगी इट वॉज इज सिंपल स्टेटमेंट बाई द एस एस पी गाजियाबाद दीपक शर्मा एंड हिज फैमिली वर नॉट अवेलेबल फॉर कॉमेंट Neha is now being treated at Safdarjung Hospital. The Delhi and UP police have begun investigating her case. Sakshi Talwar, NDTV. It's a A vast electronic spying operation is at work, say the researchers, and the roots of it are in China. The Information Warfare Monitor believes the network it uncovered has hacked into government and private computers in 103 countries. Foreign ministries, embassies, and the office of the Dalai Lama, Tibet's spiritual leader, were breached. The researchers, based in Canada, can't say if the Chinese government is behind it, but experts at Cambridge University involved in the investigation believe the state is responsible. We're pretty sure that the Chinese state is behind them, because if it had been a lone hacker group, we wouldn't have seen so much coordinated activity over such a period of time from so many locations in China. Uh, we also wouldn't have expected to see the intelligence that they got being used by Chinese diplomats. The investigation started when officials with the Dalai Lama asked for their computers to be examined. The researchers discovered that they'd been hacked into, emails and other files had been accessed. They also discovered software used by the cyber spies, allowing them to take control of webcams and microphones on the computer, allowing them to know what was going on in the room. Beijing has strongly denied any involvement in the operation that's been called GhostNet. The Chinese government has been accused before of carrying out cyber espionage, but there could be other suspects. There are individuals in China who are also very able in terms of doing this kind of cyber espionage. So it is entirely possible that it is a, if you like, vigilante nationalist uh, operation. The experts warn those responsible for the hacking from China are using sophisticated techniques and software, and they're worried they'll eventually come into the hands of organised crime, putting more than political dissidents at risk. Yes, I'm doing fine. It's a practical form of telepathy called subvocal speech, and it's being developed by Chuck Jorgensen. at NASA's Ames Research Laboratories. When we perform the task of speaking to somebody, what happens is our brain sends a signal to the muscles that control our vocal cords and our tongue. Those signals themselves provide information and they correspond to the words that we hear auditorily. Our brains send us these signals even when we keep our mouths shut. And Dr. Jorgensen has figured out a way to retrieve them. In order to capture subvocal speech, the first thing that we have to do is to catch the tiny electronic signals that will be going from Rebecca's mind to her vocal system. These are called electromyographic signals. The signals are picked up by electrodes planted on the skin. Uh, the electrodes basically look like this. They're tiny little pads much like you have in a doctor's office. So if she said the future out loud, the future we have the signal that's corresponding to that muscular activity but with subvocal speech she doesn't have to move her mouth she could say that word silently so if she would say the future silently here she said the future but she didn't move her lips and you can see that there is still the same signal being picked up by the electrodes underneath her throat Once the electrodes capture the signal, they can be transmitted as if through a cell phone to someone with an earpiece receiver. So the newer sensors are the size of a dime and they're going to continue to get smaller in the not very distant future. We see them being embedded in clothing as a matrix of sensors. Eventually, the technology will be virtually invisible. Two people equipped with the same sending and receiving devices will literally be able to talk to each other without moving their lips. Right. And that kind of covert conversation could change everything we know about communicating. What should I say? Hey. Don't answer that question. 
There's many situations where saying something out loud isn't necessarily optimal. Wait for my go. Wait for my go. This techno telepathy can be used by rescue workers or police to silently coordinate their movements. Hang back, hang back. But more practically, you could make a silent phone call during a meeting. What time is dinner? Or tell your date at a boring dinner party. Let's go home. Without insulting your host. But like most new technology, it could also be exploited. Students could use it to share answers on a test. The answer is C. Or poker players to gain unseen advantage. He's bluffing. However subvocal speech is used, the future of this silent communication is closer than you think. And it's not only fellow humans who will hear our thoughts. We can actually move a robot around using subvocal commands. For example, move forward. Machines will also be able to respond. And move left. Good boy. in the skies. The director of national intelligence has given the go-ahead for the nation's spy satellites to be used regularly by U.S. civilian agencies and law enforcement. This is a, a development all Americans should have great pride in because it expands and uses a national technical systems which we've built for tens of billions of dollars over many decades. Spy satellites have primarily been used overseas to monitor things like war zones and terror training camps. They've also been used domestically but sparingly during events including Super Bowl games, presidential inaugurals, and hurricanes. Homeland Security officials say the satellites will now be used to protect borders and critical infrastructure. Which includes ports and looking at potential uh, vulnerabilities and, the, and threats as well as consequences of attacks. Next in line, law enforcement agencies which are expected to start using them next year. While they can provide crucial high resolution images, there are limits to what these satellites can do. They can't see faces and they can't listen. At least that's what the government claims. But privacy groups worry that because there's so much we don't know about their capabilities, they could be misused and we wouldn't even know it. The question always comes down to what are the standards, are there checks and balances, and is this a power that we would trust the executive branch to use without any outside scrutiny or oversight or control? Homeland Security officials insist that they are subject to a great amount of oversight and review, but in many ways this is just one more case of the government figuring it out as it goes in the war on terror. Kelly Arena, CNN, Washington. Now files declassified in America have revealed covert republic relations and lobbying activities of Israel in the U.S. The National Archive made the documents public following a Senate investigation. They suggest Israel has been trying to shape media coverage of issues it regards as important. You can download these files from the website of the Institute for Research on Middle Eastern Policy. And we can now cross to Washington and talk to Grant F. Smith, who is the director of this institute. Thank you for joining Joining us, Mr. Smith, I'd like to begin by asking you, what exactly do these files reveal? These files are from a sealed Senate investigation, which uh, was the result of sunglasses that help blind people see. Sounds impossible, but when connected to a retinal implant, those shades like Kathy Blake, blind for 20 years, see just enough to get around. I can determine where a doorway is. The tiny camera sends a signal down this cable to a processor with the battery here. It sends a video signal up here to this wireless device, and it goes into the implant in the eye. Tiny electrodes stimulate the remaining nerve cells. The system was developed at Doheny Eye Institute with help from the National Science Foundation. It made Kathy's Independence Day something to celebrate. When I saw the fireworks, I was just mesmerized. Future implants with 1,000 pixels instead of 60 will get users closer to seeing life in HD.